So, you guys know Fischl, right? Carries a pet owl around, does electro damage, pretty much fits into any team. Well, as it turns out, the release of Fontaine only made her even better, with the new artifact set being her new best in slot. She was actually my first ever Electro unit aside from Lisa, and was part of my Eula team when I first started playing the game. Since then, she has received multiple upgrades throughout the release of the different regions, including the addition of Dendro, and now with this set, she just keeps on winning. And today, I'm going to show you from a casual player's perspective how to build Fischl, and make her one of the most versatile units in your roster. So, Fischl has been in the game since its early days. It's quite clear from her potential that they clearly overbalanced her kit. Even almost three years into the game, she has been a consistent performer, gameplay-wise. And once you build up a good setup, you'll be able to place her into pretty much any team that wants an Electro unit. For this guide, after some research, I'm going to classify Fischl's playstyle into three different categories. It's going to be somewhat similar to the Kokomi guide, but this one's going to go in another direction. Fischl has three distinct playstyles. Two of them are off-field, for either supporting a Dendro-oriented team or supporting a non-Dendro team. If you go the Chaotic Evil route, a physical damage-centric on-field playstyle is also possible. Due to the on-field playstyle having very little relevance to the off-field, I'm going to visualize the three styles like this. The two off-field builds are joined together on a line, while the physical build is just kind of off to the side. Since there is a bit of overlap between the two off-field playstyles, you can kind of get away with a hybrid setup that covers the stats needed for both ends of the line, without needing to farm another set of artifacts or weapons. However, if you are a meta player where you're dead set on playing Fischl a certain way, you probably should lean hard into either end of the line. So that while Fischl can only function well in one playstyle, she'll be very good at that playstyle. But don't worry, once I get to the later sections, I will teach you how to build her in each of the three ways. So for now, choose which path you want the build to go, and let's move on. Fischl's normal attack has 5 moves in its chain, it's not really relevant unless you play physical, but we can talk about that later. The skill ability will summon the Owl Oz to your side. There is an initial AoE of damage upon summoning, and then Oz will periodically shoot out Electro Bolts, effectively functioning as a turret. It has a duration of 10 seconds, but you can press E to resummon Oz to your location in case you move somewhere else. An interesting characteristic with Oz is that he will snapshot any buffs whenever you summon him, and will even re-snapshot whenever you move him to your location. So for example, Cock is running TTDS or the Thrilling Tale of Dragon Slayers, which whenever I swap to a new character, they will be given a attack buff. So for example, if I don't have any buffs at all, then Oz will do around 2000 or 4000 depending on whether or not the hit actually crits. But if I use the TTDS buff, I swap from Cock to Fischl. You can see that the buff is active due to these uh, red arrows that's like going up. But if I wait just before the buff is just about to expire and summon Oz, you can see that Oz will do over 5000 assuming that it crits. But as you can see, even though I don't have TTDS buff anymore, Oz will still do that much damage. The burst ability will turn Fischl into Oz and you can fly around striking enemies with lightning while the duration is up. Oz will be summoned to your location, same way as it does with her skill. Just know that you are not invincible while in Oz form and you can't dodge roll, so some players will swap to another character right away after bursting in order to save time and prevent taking damage. For the A1 passive, whenever Fischl hits Oz with a charged shot, he will call down an AoE of Electro damage. Um, just don't. Don't do this. Even with a physical build, this just wastes way too much time. Just pretend this passive doesn't exist. A4, if your active character triggers an electro-related elemental reaction when Oz is on the field, the opponent will be dealt electro damage equal to 80% of Fischl's attack. This is the big one. Due to the fact that this passive has no internal cooldown, as long as you can keep triggering those reactions, Oz will continue to apply electro, making Fischl one of the most consistent applicators in this department. Now, hopefully you've chosen your preferred playstyle, because it's time to talk about weapons. Just like always, I am definitely not qualified enough to talk about 5-star ones, but Kachin Main seems to suggest that the Polar Star is the all-around best in slot for Fischl, but almost any 5-star bow should be fairly decent. For 4 stars, I'm going to exclude any event-exclusive weapons, since there's just no way to obtain them anymore. For an off-field, non-Dendro team, so attack-focused, the Prototype Crescent or the new Fontaine Craftable, Song of Stillness, are valid choices. For Dendro-focused playstyles, the Stringless is a good choice due to its EM stat stick and a little bonus to your whole kit. For the physical lovers, Rust and the Compound Bow are valid choices. 
Rust actually works in this case since Fischl's on-field attack chain actually uses her normal attack. Artifacts can be quite tricky. Before Fontaine, you could actually just mix and match any two-piece bonuses of any attack EM or the Thundering Fury. But now there is a clear-cut winner among the sets. The new Golden Trope, or Grope set as I like to call it, will increase her skill damage by a whopping 70% assuming she is off-field. The interesting bit is that Oz's damage counts as skill damage, even when he's summoned from Fischl's burst, meaning she gets a double dip on this artifact bonus. This set is the best in slot for off-field playstyles, but the stat priorities will be a little different depending on the route you're going in. You don't actually need that much energy to cast Fischl's burst. A typical rotation will only need around 140% and can be even lower if you don't plan on using Fischl often or you're just playing the on-field version, meaning you can absolutely get away with not running in ER sense. For attack percent-centric setups, you will primarily want, well, attack. This means you will not put Fischl into any Dendro teams, as transformative reactions scale with EM instead. The usual suspects of the 1 to 2 crit ratio still exists, but other than that, try to get attack percent and ER on your substats. Again, you don't need to have an ER sense, I think that's a little bit too extra. Attack percent is perfectly fine. For spread slash hyperbloom teams, you may want EM on the sense instead, but there is an argument to be said that attack percent is still a perfectly valid stat to have as well. For both playstyles, electro percent on the goblet is the way to go. This is one of the few ways you can get this buff, so it's very valuable to have. Finally, the circlet would ideally have crit rate or crit damage, whichever one gets you closer to the 1 to 2 ratio. You probably noticed that other than prioritizing attack or EM, there's actually not that many differences between the two off-field playstyles. Now, I'm borrowing this from a Zajef video, but if you wanted to use Fischl for either of the two playstyles, instead of farming a completely new second set, you can just have an attack percent and an EM sense ready to swap, in case you want to specialize in either playstyle. Again, doing it this way means that your Fischl is not going to perform at the absolute best, but being a casual player, this is something you can do to get more out of this character with little effort. For DPS Fischl, the best set is actually the 4-piece Pale Flame. You can abandon EM altogether and just focus on attack. But if you don't want to farm a dedicated physical set, you could also do a 2-piece Bloodstain and 2-piece Pale Flame. Again, an attack percent set is preferable, then a physical percent Goblet, and then a Crit Circlet. Whichever one gets you closer to the 1-2 to ratio, you get the drill at this point. Alright, let's review my own Fischl artifacts. As usual, I'm going to rate each artifact based on three levels of quality and give a quick analysis of how good my own build is. I'm going to be playing off the official in a spread team, so this is going to be an EM focused setup. I'm running the four piece Grope set. My flower has a generous amount of crit damage and ER. This already gets me 25% to the ER requirement, so I think it's a viable piece. My Feather has a beastly setup in the substats that are all very useful, particularly in the EM department. Viable piece through and through. I have an EM Sans with some stats going into ER and crit damage. This one can definitely be better since some rolls went into defense, but it's still an EM piece that's rare enough, so I'm not complaining. I'll still put it in average though. I got an Electro Percent Goblet with the majority of substats going into either EM or Crit Rate. Normally, I would be a little bit harsher on the substats, but an Electro Percent that's on set is pretty good, so I'll accept it as viable. Finally, I have an Offset Circlet boosting my Crit Rate, with the substats being extremely favorable. Ending it off with another viable piece. Looking at my overall attributes, I have a total of nearly 500 EM, partly because I'm running the Stringless Bow close enough to the 1 to 2 crit ratio, and meeting the 140% ER requirement. For absolute min-maxing, I could see myself pushing the crit ratio even more, but this is good enough for me. Constellations. Okay, normally I would skip this section, but since Fischl is a 4-star, I actually get to talk about them. The TLDR is that C1 to C5 are all minor increases to Fischl's damage. C1 makes Oz do an extra instance of damage as physical damage, C2 makes the initial Oz summon AoE bigger and doing more damage. C3 and 5 are extra levels to her skill and burst. C4 does an extra instance of damage when entering Fischl's burst state and also healing her a little. C6 is the big one, and remains one of my biggest regrets to this day. I took a break from Genshin a while back, and the event before I came back just so happened to give a free copy of Fischl. So this could have been at C6. This is so sad. But what does it do? 
Well, it extends Odds' duration a little bit, but can also make it so that he will fire Electro Bolts that's coordinated with your active character's attack. I can't show this myself, obviously, but it's somewhat similar to Xingqiu or Yelan's burst, but instead of firing Hydro, it's Electro instead. This takes some RNG away from the auto-targeting and also increases Electro applications by a considerable margin. Just to note, non-C6 Fischl is still perfectly viable, but that last upgrade just makes it even sweeter. Leveling Talents is pretty straightforward for off-field playstyles, level the skill, and then the burst. The normal attack can remain unleveled. For on-field, level the normal attack alongside the skill, but the burst gets less of an emphasis, though you can still level it if you wish. Let's talk about how to play Fischl as an individual unit. All field playstyles don't need to pay too much attention to this, just use your skill or burst whenever you want electro applications, and swap out. For DPS Fischl, I didn't see this being covered by any other Fischl guides out there, so I'll try to explain it. When playing DPS Fischl casually, you don't actually have to be doing any animation cancelling. The setup is not meta to begin with already, so just spamming left click is good enough. But if you do want to master animation cancelling, I know two ways to achieve that. If you look at Fischl's normal attack chain, you'll notice that the first two come out quite fast, but the latter are quite slow. The first animation cancel is the one suggested on Kachingming, which is N2 AS, which translates to two normal attack and then an aimed shot. After firing the first two attacks in the chain, enter manual aim and then fire off an arrow, then exit manual aim and repeat. I can't execute this very properly, but just keep in mind that an aimed shot is different than a normal attack, and the damage can be compared in the talents menu. The other animation cancel comes from an old 1010 video that I saw called AARR, which just means doing your first two attacks and then enter an accent manual aim really quickly to reset the combo chain. It looks like you need some dexterity with your fingers to be able to do this, so your left hand will be doing quite the workout. I don't know how relevant this still is considering the video is two years old, but it's just a little fun thing that I found. When I scroll through all of the possible teams on Kachin Main, it was a long list. That's basically how you know that a unit is very versatile. There's quite a number of archetypes that I haven't even heard of. Overvape, more like overrate, id. Fischl is useful in literally any team that wants off-field electro applications. For the Dendro side, this might be a spread slash aggravate team, as I have played with running Kaching, Nahida, and Zhongli. This might be a Hyperloom team. It might be an Electro Charge team, aka Taser. It might be a Soup team, where the idea is that you swirl a bunch of reactions like mixing ingredients in a bowl of soup, including the infamous Sakakamon team. And no, I'm not going to correct myself this time. Fischl is also a good enabler for Superconduct for physical teams. In fact, she was a staple in my first ever properly built team using Eula. And for the on-field playstyles, you can pair Fischl with an off-field damage support like Beidou or Xingqiu slash Yilan, and preferably a cryo unit to trigger Superconduct. Fischl is a unit that has received upgrades on top of upgrades. It's a prime example of a character being buffed, but not actually being directly buffed. With Fontaine entering the equation, having a new best-in-slot artifact set, in addition to being run in so many teams, makes her one of the most versatile and powerful 4-stars to this day. I think it's not a stretch to say that any player will benefit from having an invested Fischl. As such, she will easily earn a 4 out of 5 rating from me. For any synergies revolving around Electro, Fischl is one of the first I will bring onto the team, and she will continue to prove her usefulness in the many days to come. I hope you enjoyed this casual Fischl guide and analysis. Let me know if you have any suggestions or have gotten something wrong in this video. I would love to hear about them. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, have fun playing the game.